Okay, it's Roger once again, Mud Fossil University. Hope everyone had a Merry Christmas. It is the 26th, day after Christmas, and uh, 2017. And here we have the walls that everyone says, Ooh, how fabulous these are. They all squished together and they look perfect. And how could they possibly do this? Well, Mud Fossil University has discovered the reason behind this, and it is. And I'm going to give you the smoking gun right now. This is all flesh, and it was all cut when it was pliable, and it was all put together like putty. And it all s fell into place exactly perfect. And I will show you the reason I say that, and I have 100% evidence and proof of that. And if anybody wants to dispute it, I would like to hear the reason. You can go on, um, just Google all these different pictures, you can see them, but look at these walls now. You see that? Somebody piled these things up just like that, and they were cut from, and I will show you how it was done. I have recreated the whole process, and they were cut from pliable, wet tissues. All right, very few people look at anything, so I'm going to throw this right at you. These are ancient tire tracks, and these are in wet tendinous tissues and this shows that they had they knew technology quite well and these kept it from sinking in deeply but this kept it so that it could move these are the steps that they cut out of this and it's just two-step process they cut in from this side and then they cut down and they take out the wet pliable and it is wet no question whatsoever because this is sinking in there so we know this was also pliable at the same time as they took these steps out there is no question whatsoever and if anybody can dispute that I'd like to know how they do as you can see these are less you know eroded looking but the exact same tire uh, tracks there's the tires there's the identical stuff this is in the same tendinous material this is the mineralized chunks of 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 uh, it's a CaCO3. It's um, it's the tendinous material that infuses into the muscle as it transitions from the purely tendon like this, the fibrils, into the purely uh, well, not purely, but mostly um, flesh in your muscles. All right, you remember those walls? There's the same walls in the background. And here's the same steps that they were cutting with those machines. And here's how they do it. They cut in this way, and then they cut down. Then they cut in, and then they cut down, just like that. And they remove these when they're wet. And there's no question whatsoever that's what they were doing. And this is that tendinous material you were just looking at. These are the fibrils that run along. And if you see these little wrinkles here and there, those are abrupt transitions. They break in those places, and that's what's called, uh, you know, that's your sports injuries. So that's how it works. I mean, it's, uh, they're, they're, they are the same chemistry, CaCO3, calcium carbonates, and they're all separated by fascia. Every one of those fibers is separate. Every single one of them moves like, like this against each other, and it has to. And in between that movement is a sheath. And that sheath is made out of kaolin clays and, and, and red little bloody investments. They call them the leucine-rich proteins. And that is what these things slide back and forth on to keep them slippery. And there's a lot of uh, chemistry involved here. And I understand every single bit of it. I've been working on this for years. And it all makes sense, and it's not being paid attention to. And you better share this because they have me locked down as spam and everything else. And I, this is not going to get off. Nobody really cares to know the truth about this because it points to giants and our true history of myths is the real facts of the history. So I'm going to have to leave it pretty much at this because I have no, no more say in this anymore. But it's just a fact the way things are. I'm going to probably put out video two on it and show how this was all cut and so forth. They other had other four-wheel drive vehicles too. That's a four-wheel drive. You see that? Look, 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 look. That's exactly what you see on a four-wheel drive vehicle as it plows up the side. You see this here? That's the bloody investment of the synovial sheath that that surrounds these tendons, and they slide back and forth in these tendons, and they're separated by fascia and these sheaths. All right. So that's what keeps them broken apart and, and, and separated from each other. You see this? That's a muscle canyon. There's a really, that is where muscle meets and is sewed into the fabric of the body and I believe this is the shoulder 
muscle like the um, rotator cuff area. I'm not positive, but I, it's in that area, and I'll show you the, why I say that. Alright, that's why I say these muscle looking areas over there uh, in the Midwest, that, that, that's what they are. They are muscles. And that's the area where you have the muscle being sewn into the other parts of the body. And you have these weaving of muscles in. And all this is fascia in between. And it runs in these colors. And that is just the nature of chemistry. Those are the transition metals you're looking at. Those reds and, and so forth. Oranges. And that, that's what they have to be. And that's what the tissue requires to do its job correctly. There's some more of this type of muscle. It's everywhere out there. All right, so I mean, there's some more. I mean, it, it, it is what it is, and it has to be started to take them realistically, not just, oh, this must have fallen here and that must have happened there. Let's look at it and be realistic. And if it's as crazy, it's crazy. But I, I think it's crazy not to look at it and just say, oh, it could be anything and just walk away. That's not right. I don't think I'll do it all in one video. This is, this is the new, it's a mud fossils, new theory pliable tissue mining that's what they did back then i showed the the equipment you know i showed you know the t tire tracks of how they did it and how they cut it and it was the source material the construction material for the antiquities uh and uh, it was fascia separated i spoke about that all the fibrils are fascia separated the tendon is very structural it's a caco3 it's called porphyritic limestone and uh the basalts um the mud rock which is also seen in those walls, the fleshy walls, is flesh. It was flesh. It's all loaded with blood and, uh, and um, cellular membranes. The clay and the mud is the eroded flesh from the mud rock. This, and they find in the DNA and all of this stuff. I have the actual mud rock flesh and they're all over. I have tons of this stuff. I have it coming out of my ear. So, it's and that's what erodes and it comes down to the clay and then at Harvard and Max Planck and everything. I sent them all my research years ago. And then a couple about a year ago they said, Okay, yes, there is mud. It has the DNA, but they don't they won't admit it's in the the, the mud fossils. Well they don't they won't talk to me, so I don't know if they're admitting or not, but they refuse to discuss anything with me. So and, and therefore the world has no clue about this, that it, this is where it comes from. They make it sound like it just came from nowhere. Well it's obviously eroded. Now the next thing is sand is eroded skin cells. It's dense in silicon. That's what presents yourself to the world. The silicon is extremely tough. And it's 50 times denser in your skin, and that's what causes the sand. It's silicon dioxide, SiO2. Now, here's what happened when they took... So that's all the story about the details here. Now, here's what they did when they made these... Uh, when they did their work on um, construction materials. All right, so you got a, a dead guy. And he's been floating in the water for 50 years. And this is what he turns into. Okay, and he's still got all of his anatomy. I'm just talking a blob of mass here. But normally they would have most of their anatomy left. It would just be waterlogged. And, it, and I've talked to a lot of people that do trapping and they work in, the, uh, in this type of place where they do see these things and they say that's exactly what happens. They turn into big waterlogged things and when they dry out, they petrify. And this is what happens. Now, when they dry, before they dried out, they drove on them. We saw them driving up there with all their little things going on like that. All right. Now, what they can do is do that and then they can do this. All right, and then they can come along with one of these and scoop under here and have all kinds of building materials. All right, these people were not fools. We think they were idiots. They did all kinds of things that we don't even think about doing. You know, they lived off the land. They knew much more than we know, trust me. And they knew alchemy, and now we think that's all silly and so forth. Now, the steps that I showed you when they cut, all they would have to do is come this way. They take their machine, they come, come down like this, and then they come down the other machine from the other side, and they come this way. And then they take this, and they put it on their little walls. And they put another one up against it, and you got no space between, and then they look, who, who knows what they can do with that stuff. It's just the way it works, and they pay not paying any attention to this, and it's all true.
So, and if they want, they could take some big press and go, and they got a million of them at once. All right, they were not unfamiliar to this stuff either. They were making these um, clay cylinders and just rolling them. So, this is not something that was out of their scope of, uh, of activities. And that's how they got all their building materials and stuff. But it was no, not, not nearly what they're saying. Now, later, as, as uh, you know, the, the ones I'm talking about are the early ones. The early, early ones are huge megalithic structures that nobody can explain. Those are fully explained now. And the ones that have the bumps on the walls, those are from the flat tendon mats. And where the, where the bumps came out was a strap that came out and attached to a tendon emphasis point, And they have transitional, uh, um, abrupt transitions, and they break. And that's just the way it works. So, it's all been explained. The stone balls are the tendon emphasis points. It's just effects. It's what it is. So, time to really take into account our true history. So, Mud Fossil University once again. The home of truth, justice, peace, fairness, respect. And we'd like to see that throughout the world. And have you take a look at reality because it is overlooked. Thank you. Come to Mud Fossil University on YouTube. Share this because I have been, I have been shut down throughout the internet. Virtually shut down. So... If you don't share this, if you see this, you're pretty lucky to see it. If you don't share it, it's just, it's just wasted time. All right. Thank you. Goodbye.